Welcome back to Higher Self Wellness. My name is Alec. I'm your host, and thanks for tuning in today. I'd like to welcome any new listeners. I'd like to welcome back all the returning listeners. And like always, if you find the show valuable or insightful in any way whatsoever, all I ask is that you share this with somebody or leave a review. And if you do both of those, then you get bonus points and a big virtual hug. Either way, super grateful you're here. And to start off, so today, what I really want to talk about today is kind of how we can deal with uh, toxic overloading, how we can enhance our digestive system, and how we do that with seasonal detoxes. And before I get into that, I just want to invite everyone listening to go check out the website. Uh, you can check out the blog. You can download a couple free ebooks, which one of them I'm going to be talking about here today. And yeah, you can interact with me on there. You can sign up for a free next step wellness strategy session where we can explore what the next phase of your wellness path really looks like. And that's totally free. You can sign up either with the link in these notes or you can sign up on the homepage down at the bottom. And one other thing, uh, you can sign up for the newsletter there. It's where I just share insights, recipes, and uh, so on. Things that I find useful and valuable and things that I find necessary to share with other people. So feel free to join. You can also opt out anytime you like. Totally cool. Uh, all right. So, so actually, I'm really excited to be in the works of creating a continuing education program for yoga teachers, for people in the field of wellness and health, and people who want to deepen their meditation practice and also just deepen their overall sense of connection to nature, to the planet, to other people. And this program I'm calling Embodied Awakening. And it's a combination of yoga, meditation, nutrition, and how to really cook and eat well, as well as simple self-care practices. And we're using Ayurveda as our guide and nature to really sync ourselves up with these rhythms that we are all inherently a part of. So that's coming out real soon. Be on the lookout for that. And uh, for all you yoga teachers, that's going to be uh, an option for continuing education, those CEUs that you need to do if you are in association with the Yoga Alliance. So be on the lookout. Today, boom. All right. If you have listened to any of the past episodes, I've been talking about spring, this transition of spring. And spoke about exercise and movement and how important that is right now. So we find more balance in our body through more of an activating practice or exercise. Talked about breaking a sweat and how that's one of the three ways in which we really move stuff out of the body. Talked about how important it is to have consistency in your bowel and your urination. And also spoke about eating, right? Remember, if you listened to the last one, I was speaking about spices. I was talking about how we can use spices to really enhance the activation of our body and what they do for us. Today, what I really want to talk about is digestive strength, seasonal detox, and how to deal with the toxic overload that we all experience today. So, Maybe you have some digestive issues. Maybe you don't. More than likely, you do. I know I have, and I continue to kind of break through and get to the deeper underlying issue. And that's what a lot of my 
that was that was a big catalyst for me wanting to learn and study about all this stuff and really begin to apply these different techniques and strategies to my own body so I could heal myself basically. Am I there? No, I'd like to say I made a lot of progress and I feel good most of the time. However, we are all being bombarded by these crazy amounts of toxins that are being released into the environment every single day. And what I find really interesting is that like there's a, there's a big push for us to eat organically, which is very, very, very beneficial, not only for ourselves, but also for the environment. However, there is so many toxins and pesticides and all this stuff being thrown into the environment for so many different things that a lot of these chemicals, a lot of these pesticides, they're showing up very subtly in organic agriculture as well. And this is just from them being so dispersed in small amounts into the environment, showing up in the rain. And so this is why we really need to pay attention to like how are we supporting the body and the natural detoxification systems that our body has. And so we do this through a couple of different ways. And the first way is by eliminating as many of those toxins as we can. I'm not saying to lock yourself up in a cage or your closet and only eat one thing or another thing, you know, for long periods of time or to just go and hide away because, like, I don't believe that running away from these issues is really going to help us out. But I think really making small choices that we can do every day, so the small daily actions, those will accumulate over time and we can support ourselves to these deeper layers and these deeper levels over time. So the first thing is eliminating as many of those uh, kind of high toxic things as possible. So that might be choosing one more food item that is organic, that might be shifting to one more vegetable item that you can find at your local farmer's market starting small, but just beginning to eliminate the input of those toxins as much as possible, or to limit, because it's bound to happen. You know, we're bound to drink tap water at a restaurant or whatever it is and be introduced to all these different things. But the less we do, the better we are long term. The next thing that I'm really an advocate of doing is, especially this time of year, so like the springtime of year, like our ancestors, they would have this, this gap of availability of food. Food would become less available. You know, the new harvests haven't really begun yet, and the old harvests before winter, they are slowly running out. Our bodies, we're, they're primed to go through these cycles of feast and famine. And it's why our metabolism is so robust, or at least it used to be, at being able to switch fuel sources. This is switching the fuel sources of carbohydrates, and then also being able to switch into fuel source of fat and using our own stored energy, our own stored tissue for usable energy. So like our metabolism has this capacity, and we can really access this by doing what is called time-restricting eating or fasting. Both of those great practices, especially this time of year in the spring. Am I saying that you should go and do an extended fast right off the bat? No, I am not. However, learning that our body is cyclical, nature is cyclical, and when we sync these two cycles, we can become more in rhythm with nature, more in rhythm with our digestive system, and enhance the quality of our body's ability to detox and utilize our innate detox pathways. So time-restricted eating, well, what is it? It's actually really simple. We do it every day. However, sometimes our habits, our behaviors, and our routines can kind of... Uh, kind of hinder uh, the, the depth of rhythm that we really experience. So 
basically our digestive system. It runs on 12 hour circadian cycle and our metabolism thrives on this eating and not eating. Basically, time restricted eating, it is only eating your food within a designated time frame. So like the most basic would be like eating your breakfast at 7 a.m. if you wake up early in the morning and then eating your last meal by 7 p.m. Not eating anything between 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. That simple. However, we can take this a little bit to the next level and maybe you eat your first meal at 8 a.m. and maybe you eat your last meal at 6 p.m. and you condense that window a little bit so you have this longer time period in which you do not eat therefore enhancing your body's ability to burn through stored energy to burn through and utilize the food that you're eating and maybe even gain a little bit of energy well I'll tell you what you definitely gain with practicing this is a little bit more time this way you're not spending more time in the morning preparing food or more time in the evening therefore you have more time in the morning and the evening to do practices such as meditation such as movement such as hanging out with your family hanging out with your friends going for a walk I mean you name it the world is yours so fasting is basically going a period of time without eating and this time restricted eating this rhythmic eating is basically a practice of intermittent fasting to where you compress your feeding window into a smaller time frame. What does this do? Well, this does a lot for our metabolism. If you think of always, so I like to connect this to the breath, right? We need an exhale for every inhale. We need an inhale for every exhale. We need this, this balance of in and out. We also need a balance of rest for activity. So, for eating we need rest between eating food and not eating food and we call that time of not eating food fasting what this does over time is this increases the body's ability to really break down the food because the body isn't ready if you think of always eating food the digestive system is constantly being bombarded there's never a space for it to ramp back up and for that digestive fire to ramp back up we don't want that. We want that fire in the belly. We want the body to be able to burn through and really receive nourishment as we take it in. So this time of year, it's a really good time to practice this. Maybe lengthening the time between, or rather shortening the time between your breakfast and your dinner. Or maybe between your breakfast and your dinner, you don't have anything at all. Maybe your breakfast begins later in the morning and your dinner is a little earlier in the evening playing around with this is really going to help in the long term by enhancing the digestive strength and allowing the body to process a lot of that stored energy that we have so next up is just eating simply and Eating simply, this could be for just a short period of time, maybe four days, maybe three days, maybe five days of eating just a mono diet, so just one food item. And what I really like to do with this for a period of time is just eat only kitchery. It is a product of stewed mung beans, uh, rice, and activating spices and a little bit of ghee, which is very potent for your gut health, for feeding the bacteria and also for a fuel source. Kitchery, it is absolutely delicious. Basically, it's like the chicken soup of the culture in India. It is awesome. And you can throw in seasonal vegetables that you have available local to you. And it's just a great way to, again, give the digestive system a break and to really enhance the body's ability to detox and release of stored stuff. If you want to learn more about Kitchery, you can download a free ebook off of the website. There's going to be a link in the notes for this, and it's totally free. And I have in there some philosophy, some theory into why this works, into how this works, as well as recipes for tea, recipe for Kitchery, recipe for 
just overall nourishment and feeling good. So eating simply, very powerful thing to do this time of year, not overloading the system, but rather lessening that load of toxins on the system so the body can move through and release what needs to be let go of. Another thing this time of year that I really like to introduce uh, or at least uh, accentuate and pay a little more attention to is that of lymphatic massage. And this is a very simple practice and there's a little bit of information about this in that ebook as well if you want to download it. But the lymphatic system moves throughout the body and it's one of the ways in which our body can really gather up toxins and then process the toxins so they can be released. And you can do this yourself. You don't need to go to a specialist, although you can if you like, but just massaging your own body, massaging your own feet, your legs, your abdomen, your back, whatever you can reach and touch, just rubbing it down and moving the energy in the skin, moving the energy in the tissues. This is really beneficial. Something that I really enjoy using during the morning to really awaken the system of the body is a dry brush. And you can also use a little bit of oil if you like on your hands if you don't want to use a dry brush. But either way, such a powerful practice to introduce into your routine this time of year so you can, again, enhance the detoxification pathways in the body, connect with your body just a little bit more, and hopefully feel a little bit better. So, like our environment, our bodies, it's overloaded with these toxins. No matter what we do, we are still going to be introduced to them. And this is much different from our ancestors, so that's why I really believe it's even more so important for us to pay attention to what we're doing, what we're eating, how we're moving, how we're paying attention to bodily sensation, and how we're nurturing and nourishing ourselves through just these simple self-care practices and taking time, taking break to really decompress and detoxify. So as these toxins accumulate in our body, Like We have a threshold in which we can have these toxins in there without beginning to experience um, distress in the body. However, when it reaches that tipping point, then that's when we can begin to experience, you know, skin rashes, digestive issues, pain in the joints, achiness in the joints, anxiety, all sorts of different things. And so that's why it's so important to always come back to the wisdom of nature and the wisdom of our bodies. And our body has this wisdom. It has the capacity to reset. That is, if we take the time and do the things necessary to, again, detox naturally, ramp up digestibility with restricting food and maybe even some fasting, However, I know that it's really hard to. It can be really hard to emotionally. However, this is just kind of going against how we've been conditioned culturally to always have this abundance of any type of food that we like at any time of day. Right? This is much different from how we have evolved and adapted to experience which is why we're in this this bit of a mess. We're in a bit of a pickle, a bit of an ecological and a bit of physiological pickle. And uh, doing these practices, playing around with eating and not eating, can really help bring us back into balance with nature, balance with our body, and balance with our mind, body, and spirit. So I'm going to be doing a cleanse using these simple practices again time restricted eating I'm going to be doing some fasting as there and there as well when I do eat it's going to be very simple it's going to include activating spices very nourishing food this way I still feel like I'm not being depleted 
and I'm also going to include that lymphatic massage and also some really nice teas that help with the body. So if you want to join me, I'm going to be doing this here. It's going to start April 2nd, and I'm going to go through April 16th, so a two-week period of just taking some time to really decompress, limit time through technology, and really tune inward and let go of all the accumulation of the fall and the winter. If this sounds interesting to you, you can join me. You can ride along this journey with me to where we can support each other and you can join this by clicking the link and signing up totally free it's just a way for us to build community to come together for us who are really interested in doing these types of things so I have set up a private group in which we can interact with and during this time I'm also going to offer three online workshops so that'll be q a this will be through live video interface through zoom you can join in there for free and you can sign up for that by clicking the link in these notes and i look forward to having you there because when i began to do this this is what really helped me move through a lot of accumulation in the body and this accumulation in Ayurveda, they call it ama. It's basically undigested stuff. It could be food, experiences, emotions. And when we take a break and enhance our ability to process our experiences, to integrate our experiences, as well as digest our food, we can burn through this accumulation of stuff, the physical stuff, as well as the energetic accumulation of stuff. And that is what I have found most profound and most helpful for my own journey is taking these breaks, taking these timeouts, tuning inward, eating simply, moving well, and feeling better long term. So again, if you want to do this cleanse with me, uh, you can download the free recipe ebook and join the Facebook group. There is a link for that in there. Uh, that is where we are just going to be supporting each other, building community, connecting with each other, and then also sharing our wins, sharing our challenges, and moving forward in a way that supports our own personal growth as well as the growth of the group. Look forward to having you there, and I look forward to connecting with you then. Anything else? I think that's it. I think I've spoken enough over the past 20 minutes. And thanks for tuning in today. I really appreciate it. And again, if you found this helpful, insightful, or inspiring in any way, please share it with somebody. You can leave a review or you can reach out to me personally, alec, A-L-E-C, at higherself.yoga. Email me, let me know what's up. And until then... I hope you have a beautiful day. I hope you are finding balance and peace and flow in your life, no matter how challenging, no matter how easy. So take care of yourself. And until next time, much love to you.